Doing a painting in black and white or just one color is a great way to understand values, which is what we're gonna be talking about in this video. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, here to help simplify old painting so you can get better faster. Now, when I say values, what am I talking about? I'm talking about how light or dark a color is. There's a saying that goes, value does all the work, but color gets all the credit. That is absolutely true. I find that a lot of people struggle to get a color to the right value. I'm gonna walk you through this painting of a barn as an example of what I'm talking about. So first off, I do what I do with all my paintings and I tone my canvas with a neutral wash. So I mix up a neutral gray that's not too dark, not too light, and I use a lot of paint thinner and I brush it on and then wipe it down with a paper towel. I find toning your canvas is very helpful when it comes to gauging values because if you start on just a pure white canvas, any value that you put on there is gonna look dark because it's right next to white. If you start in the middle of the value scale, you're gonna be able to judge the value of a color a lot easier. Now I'm gonna darken that wash a little bit to draw in the scene. So when it comes to painting, I like to work dark to light, but I like to find an average value of everything first. So even though I'm going to identify my darks first and work to my lights, I'm not going to my darkest dark or my lightest light. Like here, I'm starting with the shadowed side of the barn and I'm not mixing up the darkest value that I see. The darkest value that I see is like the cracks in the window and everything. I'm creating an average value. Like when I squint my eyes, just that big mass of the shadowed side of the barn, like what value is that? How dark do I need to get that? And I put that down. Now, when you first start putting paint down, don't get so caught up in it being absolutely perfect because the truth is it's probably not. This value that I put down for the shadow of the barn is not correct. I'll correct it in a little bit, you'll see. If you let go of trying to be absolutely perfect, it's gonna make things a lot easier because you're not gonna know when a value is correct until you have other values around it to compare to. After putting in the shadowed side of this barn, I actually go in with the darkest dark, like the accent darks of the cracks and the windows and everything to see if I've gotten the shadowed side of this barn in the general correct value. If I put in these dark accents and they didn't show up enough, I'd be like, oh, I've made it too dark. If they showed up very bold and, and st stood out, I'd be like, oh, I've made it too light. But they seem to be working pretty good. Now, as I move on painting, I'm going to paint the roof and the sky. And I'm actually constantly moving my eye around from the sky to the roof to the shadowed side of the barn and comparing these three. I know the sky has to be my lightest value because in a landscape most of the time your sky is going to be your lightest value followed by your ground plane and then these slanted planes like hills or mountains which we don't have in this and then your darkest values are going to be upright objects people houses structures trees stuff like that so as i'm putting this in i'm thinking okay i need this shadow side of the barn to be the darkest i need to my roof to be a little bit lighter but it can't be lighter than my sky and after putting all these in i realize i have to darken the shadowed side of my barn. So I do, I paint over the little dark accents. I don't care, I can go back, I can put them in later. I feel like a lot of people think oil painting is some perfect step-by-step -step process and it's really not, not that linear. There's a lot of going back, there's a lot of adjusting and fixing and pushing and pulling. All right, as I move to the clouds, I want to make the shadowed part of the clouds, like the underneath, the darkest part of the clouds, just slightly darker than the sky. So many times I see people make their clouds too dark. Even if you have like really dark stormy clouds, they're not gonna be as dark as you think. You can see here, since I'm painting them black and white, how subtle a difference they are. And the bright parts of the cloud are actually gonna be one of the brightest values here in the painting. And as I'm going, I'm comparing everything. I'm pairing the lights of the cloud to the dark of my cloud, to the sky, to the barn, to the roof, to everything. As I move down to the tree, the tree is an upright object, so that's gonna be blocked in pretty dark. Again, I'm not using the darkest dark or the lightest light that I see on the tree. Just find an average value to block that in correctly. All right, now for these bushes that are in front of the barn. Again, I'm constantly comparing my values and I'm noticing that these bushes are lighter than the shadowed side of the barn, but they are definitely darker than say the sky or the ground. So I gotta make them dark, but not too dark that they don't stand out from the shadowed side of the barn. Now that I've got a lot in there, I'm gonna put in my darkest darks, like my dark accents to see how well everything's working. I've found that I personally just like to 
find my darkest accents at the beginning of the painting, even if I know I'm gonna like paint them out and then paint them back in, I, I use them a lot as a key because I find it's it's very easy to initially get the darkest dark value right. And it's, you know, it's pretty much gonna be almost black. So it's pretty easy to nail that right off the bat without having to compare it to anything. So once you have that, you can use it as a key to compare other elements too. So I'm gonna get that in to kind of make sure everything's working how I want it to work. All right, now time for the grass. The, the ground plane a lot of times can be the hardest one to get correct. And a big reason it is, is because a lot of times in photographs, I feel like its position in the value planes isn't so apparent. A lot of times the ground plane needs to be just slightly darker than your sky. So lighter than mountains or houses, trees, bushes, people. And that's a hard little window to fit into and it might take some adjusting. So, you know, take your time with it and make sure you get that dialed in correctly. I feel the most common thing I see is people make their ground too dark. And if you get that in too dark, it's going to compete with any trees or structures that you have and just things aren't going to be reading correctly. Okay, so now that all the major values are in there, it's just a matter of tweaking things, adding, adjusting, getting more detail where you want. So doing monochromatic paintings like this is very helpful when you go to using color. You're just gonna subconsciously be a lot more aware of how dark or light a color is. Now, when you do go to using colors, don't fall in the trap of just adding black to a color to darken it or just adding white to a color to lighten it. I always highly recommend people start out using the primaries in white. Not only does this help with color mixing, but it helps with identifying value. If I have a color, I don't care what color you have and you're trying to lighten it or darken it, and all you have on your palette are the primaries in white, you only have four options to choose from to make it lighter or darker. So if I have a green on my palette, I'm like, oh, I need to make this darker, I'm probably gonna reach for some more blue and some more red. Now, if you do struggle with getting values, a helpful thing that you can do is do a pretty well-developed underpainting. You know, you can use burnt sienna or burnt umber as like a wash, and you can paint you know, pretty much the whole painting just using a wash of those and making the paint darker by using less paint thinner and lighter using more paint thinner. And you can kind of make a roadmap for the values of the painting. There's a lot of painters that will like tone their canvas with burnt sienna and then they'll take a paper towel with some paint thinner and wipe out, you know, the brightest areas. And then they'll go in with more burnt sienna and like put in the darker areas. And just having that underpainting can guide you with the values. If you want to see me do a demonstration with uh, an underpainting like that, let me know in the comments. If you're struggling identifying the values and something, try squinting your eyes. When you squint your eyes, it gets rid of detail and it actually gets rid of color a lot of times. And it makes darks and lights a lot more clear. Another thing you can do is you can take a picture of your painting while you're painting it and put it in black and white and put your reference photo in black and white. And being able to compare the two will help you nail the values exactly. And again, probably one of the most important things I can tell you is don't develop one section too far too quickly. Develop the painting as a whole. Constantly be comparing your values and dialing them in as you go. All right, I hope you got some value out of this video. No pun intended. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you want to see the full version of both of these paintings, they are on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. I have a Foundations of Oil Painting course coming out next week. It is so exciting. If you don't want to miss out on when I release that, subscribe to the Paint Coach newsletter, also in the description below. And if you want to see what I am painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go Go get painting. Hey, since you made it all the way to the end of the video, do you mind hitting that subscribe button? Also, I got another video for you right here.